more stars from the entertainment world are objecting to a war in Iraq. Is it fashion or conviction? My guest today is one of the best known names in pop music around the world. What would he do to end the crisis? George Michael, a very warm welcome to the program. Thank you. Nice to what? meet you. Why Iraq? Because it's fashionable? Oh, God, no. Um, I have absolutely no desire to be here today. I've got absolutely... Uh, I'm really reluctant to be here. Um, Why? Simply because, in all honesty, I was kind of first out of the trenches in terms of entertainers that were going to get behind something which would divide, which at the time was so divisive that if you're approaching a subject as divisive as Iraq was six or eight months ago, then you're taking a big risk as an entertainer because you're going to um, alienate a lot of people and I did very very quickly and I was completely um, uh, pilloried really for having the audacity to be a pop star who's in the mainstream as opposed to a rock star or you know uh, some kind of protest um, singer but, but a there's mainstream... no such thing as bad publicity is there I mean, oh, it, there is. Oh, there if is. Did you see particularly the publicity? If your, particularly if your record sales are falling in some areas? Did you see mine, though? Did you see my pop publicity? Did you see any of it? It was absolutely dire. And I'd, I'd like to, uh, to add, uh, I have absolutely no... Um, my record sales are not falling. I released two singles six years after my last album. And my, uh, my fans are now 35, on average, right? There was a, there was a piece on... Um, Channel 4 about three or four months ago where an artist was challenging Woolworths because they were not stocking their records and they so they had a representative of Woolworths on and this woman said well we've done our market research for Woolworths and we know that the singles um, market of 2002 is teenage girls between the ages of 12 and no 11 and 12 that was as wide as it got 11 and 12 the only reason I have to release singles um, as someone with uh, an audience of 35 plus is that if you don't release them as a single in Britain, you can't get them on the radio. I don't want to compete with, you know, Pop Idol and uh, the various, various young people in the charts that are roughly half my age right now. I'd rather just release my albums. But you say you're happier to have a big debate than a hit single. Really? Absolutely. You must be the only one in the business then. I think I probably am. I think I probably am by now. I've had 20 years of this business. I'm never on the television. Never. I never do TV. I'm phobic about cameras. I have no interest in promoting my music beyond making videos. But you never protested at the height of your fame, did you? Well, of course I didn't. I was 19, 20, 21. What were you doing when you Massive were 19, 20, 21? Well, a lot of people at 19, 20 and 21 were on the streets marching, weren't they? For what? Against, against Vietnam, for Yes, instance. I know, but I was because too young for that. Well, um, this been, is my time. There have been wars since, haven't there? This is my time. I do understand what you're trying to say. But the fact is, um, I really have no concern about uh, being uh, accused of needing publicity. I've been supposedly over four times now. I, I broke up Wham, so it was over. And then I took on Sony and took two and a half years out of my career, over principle, by the way, uh, which was a useless principle because now nobody wants to pay artists, let alone the record companies. Um, I then was over, and so I was over because of that, because it was two, three years out of my career. Then I was over because I got arrested, and now apparently I'm over because I took on politics, and I, I'm not in any trouble. I've so you're not looking for the publicity, then what are you scared of well, if about I'm looking the confrontation for with Iraq? What, okay. you, what, what scares you so much? Well, I think before we war. move on to that, before we move on to that, as you did accuse me of using, uh, and I know it's, it's part I of this program. I didn't accuse you, I asked you. Okay, you asked me. Okay, as you implied, we'll change the wording, as you've implied that I needed publicity, I have to tell you, why on earth would I be here today after what happened to me? I, I did release the single against the, um, uh, against the, uh, the advice of the record company that was releasing the single, very reluctant, against the advice of my manager, my lawyers. Um, everyone told me radio will not play it. These days, the control that the government has over radio and television is phenomenal. They won't play it. I didn't believe them. All right, so you took a risk then. And I lost. Your and I lost. So why am I here? I lost. So tell me I what you're so scared about in Iraq. I'm not scared about Iraq. I'm scared about Mr. Blair and his attitude to the future. I think we're at a watershed moment 
12, sorry, I'm sorry, September the 11th was the first part of this watershed moment, and this is the, the tail end of it. September the 11th was so obviously directed at America to provoke a response, and the response was supposed to be revenge. We've spent something close to, what is it now, so something close to, to 18 months trying to prevent that knee-jerk reaction. And if all it's been is delay, then what was the point? But there wasn't a knee-jerk reaction, was there? No, there wasn't. But you don't think this so is... There's the, been this a is... properly considered reaction, consultation around the world, hasn't there? Has there? Hasn't there? I don't see any consultation. American politicians? I see a lot of bullying. Trekking around the world? Yes, but do you see them actually saying anything but, but terrorists? It's either the terrorists or us? Your complaint is that there hasn't been a debate, that the newspapers... No, 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 no. My complaint was, in, it was eight months ago, was that there was no debate. So you've had plenty of debate since then? Oh, yeah. All of which is being ignored. That's my point. I'm here because I'm ignored proud by, whom? by the Prime Minister. Hey, he's, he's seen the need to go out and make the case for what he believes in. Yes, that's, right. a, and, that's and, a response to the debate, isn't it? Absolutely. And do you not think that his voters have told him they're not convinced by that? Some have. Somehow, no, 91% yesterday, not united. 91% said without the UN, they didn't want to go in. Do you think that's close to unanimous? You were so much aligned with Blair and Cool Britannia, mm -hmm. weren't you? At, no, 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 I wasn't. No, I wasn't. I never turned up at that bloody party. Excuse me. I was never going to be used that way. When I saw Tony Blair, I saw him in Islington before he got into Downing Street. Right, when he needed people like me, I saw him personally, I went and had a meal with him, discussed it because my lawyer is a member of the Labour Party. But you supported it, didn't you? When? Then. The supported cool, the, what? The Cool Britannia. I've movement. never, I've never no? believed in Cool no? Britannia. No, it's not. You're not talking to Noel Gallagher or, or somebody from the Britpop age. You're talking to somebody who started 21 years ago. Cool Britannia is a load of bollocks to me. You know? You said, I'm still a believer in Tony Blair. I found him to be a charming and decent man. At what point would you lose faith? In well, Tony if I'm Blair? really honest, I've lost faith in the last five days. You said this three days ago. Mm. But I was trying to be, actually on Sunday I was trying to be, I was trying not to come across as too wound up, in all honesty. And what happened was, I was quite polite and nobody reported anything, which is not what I'm here for. So today I'm kind of speaking my mind a little more than I did at nine o'clock on Sunday morning. Why? What's changed in the last five days as far as you're concerned? Um, I mean, you've, you've said he's a decent man. Well, it's, it was on Friday, actually, that I decided it was some... I'll, I'll be honest, I've been very distressed by Mr Blair's behaviour for, for several years in terms of the way I think he's removed the idealism from politics by taking a left, uh, a supposedly left of centre party and calling it Labour or New Labour and then basically saying that it, what, we have to be pragmatic. The left is really, in these overly consumerist times... The he left also said you have to have an middle. ethical foreign policy, didn't he? Absolutely, and, and, and absolutely, this is not ethical, is it? We're, this is a Christian country with supposedly a Christian leader who somehow think that the answer to the future is preemptive action. Now, to me, preemptive action is every bit as dangerous a concept as the initial concept of creating the atomic bomb. And by the way, that was created for the, same, for the same kind of deterrent purposes by the same nation. And I do not believe that this is any more safe than that. So you've lost faith in him, have you? Well, because until, is that a yes? until last week, I thought it was bluff. I really did. I thought he's trying to keep the pressure up until the last moment. But he's damaging, he's making so many damaging statements and he's so bullying lost the faith. UN. You have lost, let me bully you a little. He has I lost don't know, faith. how can I say, you know, to lose, lose belief you have to... Are you writing him off or are you saying he... No, I'm, you if still I was trust writing him. him off I wouldn't be here. If I thought that man was not listening to anybody I wouldn't be here. You'd still I vote think, for him? No, I wouldn't vote for him. I would never vote for him again. Never vote for him again, because he's gone beyond the bluff. He's now bullying the UN on behalf of, of uh, Bullying? Mr. Persuading, Bush. he would say. What, letting... Well, I'd say bullying. You have to be... It, you cannot ignore statements like the UN needs to prove its relevance. You cannot ignore the fact that America could sit there and say, you either agree with us or you're irrelevant. Fifteen members of the Security Council, mm -hmm. unanimous, signed mm -hmm. up to Resolution 1441, yeah, and it's calling on Iraq why? to disarm. And, and it's for the Is same that reason. It, listen, it's the even the, Syria. It's the same against reason. all expectations. It's the same reason, right? That they, if they pass this new resolu resolution, which seems a lot more unlikely, considering that France and Germany are completely 
saying there's no need for it. If they pass the new resolution, it will be for the same reason they passed the first one, because they are afraid of extinction. And to me, that is bullying. What kind of Prime Minister do you want? I if want you don't want a man who leads on his convictions? I want somebody who leads on his convictions until the point that they're public. Until the point that you disagree with no, them? No, until the point that 90% of the public disagrees with well, them. That's the hard time. That's what he's paid for, isn't it? Take no, hard decisions, you are not, not to not be a populist. Paid, you're not paid to put people's lives in danger and ignore their opinion on that very subject. No one is paid to do that. He says failure to act would lead not to peace but to a bloodier conflict in the future. That's what he says. Well, I would, I will take the future compared to right now because failure to act may mean absolutely we know the dangers of Saddam Hussein. We know absolutely we can't afford to leave him alone. Why have we left him alone for 12 years, right? Why did we leave him there 10 years ago and now at the point when Sharon is bombing the West Bank? we're going to decide to take on Saddam. So they gave diplomacy a chance for 12 years. Even you have to admit, 12 years Absolutely, is long I'm enough, not, isn't I have it? no sympathy with Saddam Hussein. I have no sympathy with him. He's, he should be gone. We need him gone in order to, to stabilise the region. But you cannot do this at the moment when the entire um, uh, fundamentalist terrorist network around the world is waiting for this to legitimise what they want to do. How do you think you've contributed to the debate over Iraq? Well, I mean, if anybody... you take Shoot the Dog, which made okay. Blair and Bush out to be fools and mm -hmm. being described it's as rather satire. a vicious... It's called satire, it's uh, called satire, actually. Described as rather a vicious attack by some people. Well, it's not, is it? It's satire. And by the way, it's satire from the same people that show exactly the same stuff with exactly the same animation, exactly the same character references every Saturday on ITV at 10.30. But you wanted a serious debate. How does that you do kind not, of thing contribute what, to a serious what, that's debate? That's what I'm here for now. Eight, nine months ago, no one wanted it. And believe me, we're talking about a, a, a generation which has so little um, desire for politics and its music that I knew that if I was going to be ahead of the game, and try and get people to discuss this, I had to do it with some humour. And sure enough, even the humour at that stage in time, it was something people did not want to hear about. Now that they're deluged with it, it's OK. Is I can come out here and I'm relatively safe. At that point in time, I wanted to write it, make the, the, the uh, statements as, as uh, broadly and as funnily as I could in the video to make sure that before people were too freaked out to talk, they laughed their way into things. But things like, so Cherie, my dear, could you leave the way clear for sex tonight? Tony, 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 I know that you're horny, but there's something about that bush that ain't right. Now tell me what, what you're... Does, what does that contribute? OK, I'll Do tell you, you what it... Tra OK, that? can I read my own lyrics for a second? Excuse me. I'll tell you what it contributes. The idea... Right at the top. The idea is not anything to do... Now, Americans turned this into that they were having a homosexual affair because, of course, that's kind of the joke that was in the video, mm -hmm. right? But actually, what it means is, Tony, 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 it's, the idea is that she's saying she's going to withhold sex because there's something about that bush ain't right. Do you get the little joke in there? Bush, American but term for bush. what does it contribute to the debate? It was to bring it to people. And do you not think by any chance, because you're still not giving me any break here, do you not think, I don't know how, what, how closely you were watching popular culture at that time, but I think I dragged that argument into the mainstream, out of the political uh, chattering classes, or whatever you would call them, I dragged that out of the, the political classes into the mainstream two or three weeks before it was going to get there. And I would say, at this point in time, when we are supposedly in such a bloody rush, that those two, three weeks were actually, it was worth what I put up with, it was worth losing the record, no one playing the record, no one playing the video. It was worth it because when I was attacked for doing it, it came into the mainstream. And that's exactly why I'm here again today. People exactly. say it's, it's an easy subject, anti-war protest. I don't think it's Pl an easy subject. It's Pl not an anti-war. Plenty, plenty of precedents for that, anti-war, anti-this war in particular. Oh, wait, sorry, what were the precedents for this? in entertainment. Plenty of people in the past. Who talked before me? About this particular, I'm not talking mm -hmm. about this particular war, so, in, pre in previous so wars. So what was the thing that I was contributing when I first talked about this? You tell me. I brought it into the mainstream because I'm a, I'm a pop singer and there's almost no way of bringing politics into the mainstream these days unless you're not a politician. So I'm absolutely convinced that I was one of the first people screaming that we needed to have this chat, and that brought it forward. It, I'm very convinced that the actual date that they wanted the debate to start was September the 11th. 
I saw that, that um, the speech that uh, Bush made from Capitol Hill on the night of September the 11th when nothing had gone off and everyone was thanking God that nothing had gone off. And I saw that speech and it made me absolutely aware. I couldn't understand around the time of the World Cup and the Jubilee why no one was talking about this. You've taken a lot of criticism, as you say. You've mm -hmm. walked into danger. And I'll take a lot more. Noel Gallagher says, George is now trying to make social comment. This is the guy who hid who he actually was from the public for 20 years. Now, all of a sudden, he's going to say something about the world. I find it laughable. That's before you get to the song, well, I mean, which is diabolical. I think, what do you I think, think, think that's that? a laughable statement. What, the fact that I did not want to share my sexuality with the world in this, in, in this current media um, media uh, atmosphere. The fact that I didn't want to share my sexuality with the world means that I have no right to talk about politics. This is not an intelligent man. He's not someone you should throw quotes at me from, really. If you're going to find criticism, find it from Mr. Murdoch. You know, Mr. Murdoch attacked me solidly on Sky News, in the New York Post, and in the Sun. And what he would do would be he would print these slurs in the New York Post in such a way that when they reprinted them in the Sun, its sister newspaper, I could only sue on the basis of it being reprinted from the American source. And the American source would have been much harder to sue. So I, there was a campaign... What worries you about the New York Post? Well, what shouldn't worry me about the New York Post? It's a fascist newspaper. A washed-up pervert. Well, that would... Say, why should I worry about that? Apart from the fact... I mean, really, it's no... Why would I worry about that? I don't worry about the Daily Star. I don't worry about the Daily... You know, the, the uh, sport. I don't worry about the sun or the mirror. Why would I worry about that? I, I do find it absolutely unbelievable that they're able to call a homosexual man a pervert for having been caught cruising. I do find that quite uh, laughable that that is not suable. <laughs> You feel a responsibility to speak out. But Absolutely. people are saying, now that you're speaking about it on this issue, why not about others? Why not against drugs? Why because not against my, my unprotected Because my family is sex? not at risk. That, that would sit up and make people take no, 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 it out. Okay, just wouldn't and, it? And, yeah, well, why would it? That, those are the kind because of things that rock stars talk. Because it would be unexpected. No, it wouldn't. Well, it would be unexpected for me to do just say no. Excuse me. Have I you know done you do it? A lot of, Have I you know done you... it? Of course not, because I've taken drugs. I'm not a hypocrite. Do you know I'm not going to do that kind of rubbish? I'm not going to do that kind of thing. This is something that threatens the lives and the, and the lifestyle of myself and the people I love. This is a lot more important than trying to discourage people from taking drugs or telling them that they really should pay for their CDs. You think you know? so? On a long-term basis? What, this, this yes. altercation? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm afraid I really do. And I think if, if you don't, then I'm, I'm, I'm jealous because you must be sleeping a lot better than me. What do you want Saddam to do? What should be done with Saddam? Um, if he doesn't, he's made it clear now he isn't going to disarm, he won't get I've rid of the missiles. Point. I think I've already made just, that point. Just talk to him. No, not to Saddam. Saddam has to be dealt with in the way that Saddam has to be dealt with, but not now. Not until there's some effort shown in Palestine. Otherwise, why are you linking the two together? Because they're not linked, but every terrorist in the world who is an Islamic fundamentalist terrorist links those two things. Would you agree with that? A lot do. A lot. But, that, but that doesn't make it right, does it? Of course it doesn't, but this is not about right and wrong. This is, the, this is what's dangerous about this situation. What this is about is the Pandora's box that was opened by the Americans, you know, in the 50s or 60s with the uh, invention of the atomic bomb. That Pandora's box was opened then, and little bits from it are now internationally placed. Make right? you feel better if the UN had a second resolution authorizing force? Slightly, but I don't think, because I think that most of the people who have voted against uh, Mr. Blair on this is issue are not voting really on the issue of whether it's right for us to kill innocent people in Iraq, right? I don't really think they're voting on that. I think they're voting on that as normal, but this time they're saying, we do not want this war in our backyard. We did not do anything to deserve it. Our administration, as far as we know, did not really do anything to deserve it. I do not think Americans have the same point of view. I think that they, are, they have been attacked, they feel frightened, they understandably want a strong leader, they're not anywhere near as informed by their media as we are, and I honestly think that the majority of British people have no idea what we're doing here, on our own, with the Americans. Is George Michael disillusioned with the music industry? <laughs> Had enough? Huh? Um, 
Song from your album, Older. Star people counting your money until your soul turns green. Star people counting the cost of your desire to be seen. Mm -hmm. Can't help but hope there's a difference between you and me. Mm -hmm. Is that what you hope? Well, I don't yeah. hope it. I've, as I said, I have barely promoted myself in... Uh, when was uh, the, uh, Since Faith, which was 1988, I've barely promoted myself. I've been on television maximum a couple of times a year, if that, right? I stepped back from needing this a long time ago. I like to, I, I, it's still, the two most important things in my life are my family, including my partner, and my music. And I'm not complete with either one of them uh, being absent. I need Fed up with to... the record industry there. You oh, by, oh, the absolutely. bosses and the corporate guys who've done their best to relieve artists of their art. Oh, they have. Would you honestly say you hear much art on the radio? Which is why I think it's kind of, you know, I'm begging, I'm hoping that there will not be Band-Aid 2 because the reality is very, very few people in the industry now that you're hearing on the radio make their money from their own hearts and minds. They make their money from singing the words of others. And so therefore the, the weight of something, you know, called Band-Aid 2 or 3 or whatever would be incredibly slight because those people involved would be extremely young and extremely lacking in knowledge about any type of politics. It's not the same as making a record to try and send money to Ethiopia. This is different and I really hope the pop music, the industry, the current industry, the current generation stays away from it because I really don't think it's, uh, it would be a very genuine move. Too much violence in music? Rapping lyrics? Well, Still American lyrics. music has been very nihilistic for a long time and I find that I'll actually, to be honest with you, even though our music industry is, is dying on its feet, I would much rather um, have no youth culture, which is basically what we're coming to. We had youth culture, which is now almost, it's been assimilated and there's nothing left of it. I'd rather have no youth culture than a nihilistic youth culture, which is what America is having to deal with. What are the lessons for you from this protest? You're going to protest, is this a one-off as far as you're concerned? Oh, Iraq? absolutely. That's it. The only other thing that I would ever um, put my neck on the line for would perhaps George Michael's be... going to stop caring and go back to the business. Well, no, I think... The only thing that I can see myself putting myself this far out on a limb for, again, is um, probably Clause 28. I would go that far for Clause 28. On homosexuals? Mm-hmm. Teaching? Uh, well, it's not just the teaching, it's all kinds of things. As it stands, I can still be arrested walking down the street holding my boyfriend's hand. As it stands. I mean, it would never happen, but it's one of the ridiculous things that's in there. And I think uh, it's time for gay couples... I, I, have, no, I have no real view on, on marriage because it's never been something... I have no desire to ape heterosexual um, relationships, but I think it's absolutely time that people who live together their entire lives have the rights of spouses, as opposed to the person... You know, the idea that if anything happened to myself or Kenny, that our, our families would be, uh, would have all the rights and that we would have none. It's just ridiculous. Okay, George Michaels, good to have you on the programme. Thanks Thank very you. much indeed. Cheers. Thanks.